Hey, there's uh, those the, those hate watchers. They watch something, they hate it, but they watch it anyway. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and then they'll go on Twitter. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not even on Twitter, so I don't even mess with that stuff. Oh my god, Twitter's so fun. You should get okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> you're the first person that's ever said that i love that i love that answer actually yeah most people are like you're not missing anything no. you're like you're like you should get on there it's I have, hilarious i have a <laughs> on it. are you kidding me who are those people welcome to the lone star play podcast i'm your host patrick scott armstrong join me and a famous guest we discuss their career life food texas and everything in between. Let's get started. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by TexasRealFood.com. Find out more at the end of this episode. Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Let's jump into this. My guest today is Karen Obliam. She is an actress. You can find her on uh, BET Games People Play and uh, Doom Patrol. She was in season two. And uh, in a couple episodes in season three, um, she the reason we had her on for that reason, but another big reason, uh, she is going to be starring in the new upcoming reboot of House Party. Um, it's an amazing film that uh, LeBron James is actually producing um, and the uh, director of Old Town Road. Remember that song by Little Nas X uh, with uh, what, what was his name? Billy Ray Cyrus. Um, they got like a bazillion views. Yeah, the director of that, um, Cosmetic, I believe is his name, he is doing the uh, his, his directorial debut for House Party. And um, look, this is going to be unbelievable. Who doesn't remember House Party with Kid and Play, right? And uh, Karen basically plays Trisha's character from the film. Right. So, the, you know, it's a modern uptake. Look, Karen goes into detail about sort of the film and her character and, you know, reveals some some details about it, which is pretty cool. And uh, look, there's no trailer. There's no nothing. So if you want to know about the film, this is the podcast to find out about it. It's real simple. Who doesn't love House Party? This reboot is going to be sick. It's going to be all over the place. Everybody's going to be talking about it. And I can't believe we got the scoop here to talk to Karen, find out about this movie. So excited. I mean, House Party, we talked about, you know, the history of House Party, too, and what an impact that, that film had, to be honest with you. So we talked how she got the part. Look, it's a great podcast, guys. So if you don't know about Karen, uh, you're going to know about her now. You're certainly going to know about her when the film comes about. And uh, she is a future star, for sure, uh, on the rise, without a doubt, and well-deserved. Everything she's in is awesome. So, again... A uh, quick word from our sponsor, Texas Real Food, and then we'll get this podcast going, okay? Because we got to keep the mics on, y'all. All right? We'll be right back. Hi. I wanted to talk to you about other things that are on the Texas Real Food site that are just as amazing as putting in your zip code, finding the best place around you that's serving, you know, all natural, fresh, organic ingredients, all right? There's resources on there, reviews, blogs, articles, and most importantly, Texas Real Food recipes. So you can find things on there that really aren't on any other site. I promise you that. And stuff that's pretty standard, but we give it a twist, right? That's the chef way. Something familiar with a twist. So we've got, for instance, cinnamon spiced hot cross buns. You can also find a great Texas strawberry cheesecake recipe. Just amazing stuff. So please check it out at texasrealfood.com. All right, back to the show. Okay, and we're back. A sip of my espresso. That's right. All right, look, guys, let's get to this interview with Karen. Um, but uh, real quick, let me mention our social media. Please follow us on uh, Instagram, Lone Star Plate, and on TikTok, guys. We got a new TikTok. We're putting stuff up. Well, it's going great on TikTok. We don't have many followers, but we're getting tons of like views and likes and stuff. But for some reason, we need to get some followers. I, we're learning here, guys. Okay, YouTube, we're still crushing it. So please subscribe on YouTube. Uh, leave us a like, a comment, share it, whatever. Do lots of clips on there. Uh, so again, thank you so much for watching uh, the show and listening and supporting us. We really do appreciate it uh, from everyone here. So thank you so much. 
Uh, look, let's get to this interview, right, with Karen. All right, uh, so Karen Obliam in the new House Party uh, reboot. And uh, look, the original director, uh, Reginald H uh, Hoodlin, or Hudlin, gosh, I hope I'm saying that right. He's involved. He's helping produce this. So look, guys, this, I, I can't tell y'all I'm excited I am about this movie. So without further ado, I'm sorry. Oh, God, y'all get ready to laugh, y'all. Karen Obliam. Here we go. Enjoy. Yeah, awesome. Sorry about earlier. Please, please. Don't, you're busy. You're, you're doing real things here. You, you, you're doing actual things, okay? I'm just sitting around on my ass doing nothing. You, you, well, you're you know. up and at them. Are you in Austin? Um, I was in Austin for seven years. I moved uh, to Dallas in uh, end of February. Okay. Are you from Austin? No, I'm from the Dallas area sort of oh. originally. So I sort of came back, if you will. Oh, did you like it here in Austin when you were here? Yeah, I love Austin. Uh, I had a food truck there for like five years. So, yeah. Oh, are you a love chef? Austin. I am. I am. Oh, I was. Uh, I was technically. I don't run a kitchen anymore. I do the podcast now for the last couple of years. But yeah, before for I was like in the restaurant industry for a long time. Yeah, I, maybe. That's I don't amazing. know. I don't know. I'd say cook now. I just like to cook. Uh, right, right. Good, I care good about titles. Or whoever gets to eat the food. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's like I could never get a guy that likes to make a grilled cheese sandwich. So really, I feel like people are getting into cooking more. Are you into cooking? Do you like to do get now? Donuts on? For some reason, I have to be very comfortable with my surroundings. Like I'm at my parents' house. I mean, I have a house here in Austin, but someone's in there right now. So I'm at my parents' house and, you know, I grew up here, but like I just started cooking because I'm like, because I haven't been here in so long. And so yeah. I was just, I don't know, it's my parents' house still. Um, and I don't even know if they like it. Uh, so it's <laughs> like, I got to be confident in that you won't judge me for my cooking um, oh, no. for you. So Don't worry about I that. Like too. I just made some habanero mango um, wings. It was really good. Wow. Hello. Okay. You're like, I'm not really cooking. And then you just drop that bomb on us. Uh, fruit uh, hell <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. With a nice foam, something, yeah. something. Okay. Okay. All right. No, I love that. Hey, that sounds great. Uh, yeah, it's good. I'm not going to okay. lie. It's wings are in hot, a hot commodity right now, actually, if you didn't know it. The sourcing for getting wings is tough right now for a lot of uh, restaurants and stuff. So I think a chef would know. Yeah, I, I know, right? These like boring details, like this is real, this is the real stuff behind the scenes. <laughs> you like this is really happening. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get these things. Listen, nobody wants the dirty details of the restaurant industry. Your yeah. industry, however, that's like what people go for. Not me. I don't really care because I'm, I, I, you know. Right, right. Honestly, I just want to talk, you know, I'm real stuff. I'm more interested in wings. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I mean, you're going to find me. I, I could do a whole podcast on wings. Really, right. we could we could de get deep down the history of wings, where it comes from, the different right. styles, how you do it. Listen, oh, my God, I could go for it. Lollipop wings. You say what? Lollipop wings. Have you heard of those yet? Yeah. Well, aren't those like the, the vegan wings or is it just wings that they cut off like the bottom meat part? Sort of. They do it two ways. They'll do it that way where you're talking about very smart. And then the other ways they'll do it is they'll debone. They'll just take all the chicken off the bone and then sort of like shred it, mix it with some spice and then mold it back onto the bone. Oh, God. I and make like a lollipop out of it. I don't know. It doesn't give the, 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 the wing bite. I feel like it's just like <laughs> now it's just shredded chicken on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know they do different things with it you know it's it's uh, you know hey oh. teach their own i don't know yeah I, i'm with you though i, I like the uh, a nice just wing wing uh, yeah i'm with you go right for the wing dude i don't need no shredded chicken <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i described it wrong now we're just stuck on shredded chicken oh, i did like, it wrong i, like I did it wrong yeah <laughs> look at you did never heard uh, no no my gosh oh gosh karen Please, well, let's not do that. Uh, <laughs> listen, um, I, <laughs> I've been watching so much of you on different shows and different movies like recently. This is crazy uh, to see you here. So I'm, I'm really excited to have you. Uh, you know, when I saw House Party, listen, oh, I, I was born in 1979. So for me, House Party, I was about 11 or so when it came out. So it was had a big it had a big impact on me growing up. I'm not going to lie. It really did. It had a huge impact on me, like a lot of people. 
right? Yep. Did, did you grow up watching House Party or no? Did you sort of come in late to it? What, what was I your... Came in late. I came in late to it. My friends, like, a couple years ago, actually sat me down and, <laughs> and made me be like peeled my eyes open and like watch this movie or you're not black i'm like okay, <laughs> cool uh it's great um i loved it it was like it was incredible like the whole dance scene the little um you know the kid in play like i knew about the kid in play because okay, yeah. it's hot it's just what people know you have to know that and yeah. so Seeing it and like where it came from was really cool for me because I mean I know how to do it but I don't I, you know I haven't exactly seen and I might have seen it when I was younger but I just don't remember. My parents are very uh, strict about what we watched. <laughs> like sure. it's, yeah, yeah, we watched the slightest bit of, like kissing. My dad will just appear like a wizard and be like, so, "This is what you're watching." Hmm? <laughs> uh, no, no, it's just, it's just I don't even know what happened. I don't even know how this got on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious we're very that's hilarious. sheltered when it come, came to like what we watched unless we were at a cousin's house or something yeah that i mean that's sort of when you're a kid you kind of have to watch those movies you know uh, like that a friend yeah yeah later or well you know at this point it was the late 80s early 90s for me there was no internet kids did a bunch we watched all kinds of movies i don't know it feels like parents just didn't care back then i feel like parents were just like what are you watching mm -hmm. oh great let's watch it together oh. <laughs> It was a big deal. Not mine. Not mine. I rewatched House Party again. I hadn't seen it in a really long time, and I thought, wow, this is a pretty adult movie. Like, there is some pretty intense. No, there is. This. Like, you know, like I thought, but, but also very important themes that I don't remember from when I was a kid watching it, which yeah. I thought was great. You know, uh, I don't know, you know, the way the police harass the guys yeah. through, throughout it. When I was a kid, I didn't really notice that as being something just laughing at the moments right you're not really thinking about it but rewatching, i'm thinking wow this is stuff is really touching on some uh mm. really important topics you know current event stuff yeah. way ahead of its time I, I feel in a lot of ways um as far as comedies go i mean this is 1990 for sure came out, and right? i agree like, it's like these things that you don't really think about because it's like covered in comedy yeah. and like you've been like oh my god this is so funny but then you think about it, you're like oh wait no, this is real, but it's yeah. like, it's like, I think black people in general, they have to make light of really dark things. And so I just feel like that always kind of comes out in our movies as well. Like you always notice that there's always something dark happening, but it's just like, you don't notice at first because it's funny and we're funny and like naturally like that. So I always love getting that after, but when I was younger, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known either. But now these days, I'm like, oh, that's real. Yeah, absolutely. Was that something for this? Have you already shot the movie already? Your yeah. parts with the movie, sir? It's already done. Done. It's wrapped. Wrapped. Okay, great. I mean, like, uh, is the, are those the themes? Are, are y'all trying to, like, you know, revisit some of those themes from this earlier movie? It's a sort of a reboot, yeah. a rehash. Is it just, like, forgetting some of that stuff? or? No, no, no. There's definitely things that we're touching on that are... Um, uh, culturally important, uh, social, socially important. Um, and it's pretty much the similar, it's similar, obviously the premise is similar. It's just, it's a house party, yeah. but <laughs> you know, pretty much I was like, why are you taking house party? This? I'm like, it's literally about a house party. We'll be okay. Um, and so, but it's just modern, modernized. And so yeah. it's a lot of people, you know, a lot of situations that, you know, nowadays that you know would have not made any sense back then so that's what i love my the director calmatic he was saying he's like i think there should be like a house party every year because it's such an easy premise it's just like a party full of people and it's like you can have fun moments you can have real moments you can have socially aware moments woke moments so many things can fit into this one premise that I was like, yeah, that's actually, they would never allow it, but that's actually <laughs> a, a really good idea. Um, so yeah, it's, it's the same, but um, remixed into modern day. So, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. It's sort of a timestamp of the year. Yes. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's great. That's such a great idea. Um, 
transition. Wow, I'm sure technology, like social media, I'm sure these have to be sort of new aspects. Uh, For sure, well but in. like also still keeping with the, I don't even think he inserted like social media a lot. He used social media as a premise for the party, but it wasn't like a main character. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. In the thing, which I really love because um, it's it's nice to see these days because I'm writing, I'm currently writing a Western and I realize how hard it is to not put a cell phone or a car in there. <laughs> you know, like, how are they going to get to where they're going to go? And how are they going to talk to people they need to talk to if they don't have these things? So I was like, you know what, let's make it magical. Um, so it's like a supernatural Western now. Um, but <laughs> yeah. So they could get around. I love that. Just to solve your transportation. You're exactly. like, you know what? They can fly. Right. So go. yeah, yeah. transport guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's nice to see when you can still do that these days and not have social media be a part of every little thing. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. That's awesome. I mean, the first house party is such a character driven uh, film. It really centers around you know these these people and what they're going through and that in that time in their life. And honestly, there's a lot of even themes as an adult you can relate to, but even as a teenager, right, that is based on like that, that they can relate to. And I, honestly, you know, watching the movie again, I thought, man, the plot really just doesn't go where you think it's going to go. And I love that. It's such a it was such, such a fresh idea back then. And, I, you know, I'm assuming that with everyone that's great working on this new one, it's going to have that same sort of fresh take. So you honestly. Know. Just like you felt then, like, oh, wow, I didn't realize this party about a, or this movie about a party is going to do all of this. Yeah. The the one that we're doing this year is. <sighs> I'm like, how did we get here? Like, this is <laughs> this is insane. Like, it was nothing I expected at all. And I can't even tell you what it is like you're when you watch it. I'm almost like you think people are going to like. Like, like be in it like this is some crazy stuff like it turns <laughs> it turns on you but it's like hilarious so i i'm really excited for people to talk about it on twitter that that's gonna be oh, so wow oh my yeah. god oh wow that's crazy um what did you have to do like stunts for this stuff i mean like what was it that kind of house party you know because you I, know well, yeah actually they did they did more than me yeah. But I did a car chase scene, which was really cool. It's my first. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Uh, like house party. You have a car chase. Yes. Um, <laughs> I also killed somebody. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's definitely uh, I got a lot. I got some stunts in just a little bit, but they definitely got more than I do. They do some very crazy things in this movie. It's almost like one. Of, it's like it's a buddy comedy. and. Yeah. You know, buddy comedies, you can put anything in there. So, and they definitely did. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, you know, also rewatching the original, I thought like it introduces like Martin and that character that he, Martin Lawrence, you know, how he is and how that really becomes, I think, the, the you know, his show later on, yeah. you know, introduction of like Bernie Mac. Uh, yeah. But you had, it was Pops. What was his name? Robin Harris. So, so Bernie Mac before Bernie Mac. Yes. Like, Man, this movie did so many things. It's really? like, I couldn't even get everything on a piece of paper I was writing. I, I just thought, I was like, oh my God, I mean, it's just so many, yes. really. It's like, uh, I, I feel like, I know it's considered a cult classic and I know these things, but like, it really is an influential film. And I'm glad that y'all are doing this film because it's gonna just make everyone appreciate what y'all are doing, but also look back at the original and just bring yeah. it all together and love and I love it. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, I, I you know, I know people are always up in arms with them, um, like your know, reboots and all that stuff. But I'm like, you still have your baby. You still, I mean, there's honestly so many house parties already. So I'm like, can't be too mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's like fun. laughs> um, so it's just like, but you still have that. You still have the original. You still have um, just the originality of that. And we just wanted to take it and to put a little spin on it and to entertain people and, you know, be, the people of color are working behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. And I think it's a beautiful thing. So it's just a fun movie. I think it's just going to be a fun thing to watch with your friends, anybody, uh, maybe not your, maybe not your kids, but anybody <laughs> else. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I love it. 
what what can we what can we talk about your character like what can we get into i don't know so i i feel like every character kind of has the character from the original they brought someone in to kind of be that character sure. um except for uh gina um gina her name's that to teach campbell <laughs> Ah, uh, Gina. <laughs> Gina, uh, I love it. Right. I like and that. we all know her as Gina, though. Come right. on. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but her character, I would say, is closest to my character, you know, playing the love interest. Um, and, you know, Martin's character is DC Young Fly. And, you know, everyone has their thing. And DC just kills it. And I think he's amazing and funny as hell. Um, but Venus, she's, um, I would say, the voice of reason. I attempt to play those for some reason. I'm like, I'm not the voice of reason in real life. How do we do um, But yeah, she's definitely uh, the voice of reason and she um, is not about this party. Um, and, but she has a, a history with Kev, Kevin, who's kid, no play, kid. Um, and she can't help but help him because he's kind of in a really tight space spot, um, money-wise, he has a child, um, and she understands that this is something that he really needs. And so she definitely um, has a lot of qualms about it, um, but eventually she is down with it and is in full force and she gets to meet all the people at the party and it's very funny and she's great i think she's pretty cool i don't know maybe a little biased um she's really pretty too <laughs> but yeah she's just she's pretty much the voice of reason for the two crazy guys that's funny and, and the original she loved gina i'm gonna say you know trisha Campbell. Right. she she loved she wanted to go to the party Kind of. She was like, well, I guess maybe not at the beginning. I guess you're right. I guess. Right. Well, um, I think she was more so like, like a party goer. Yeah. Good point. Rower. Yeah. Venus helping with the party throwing. I uh, see. I yeah, see. Yeah, she's definitely see. there beforehand, and she's just, you know, she's just having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, dancing and stuff. Um, oh, they're man. dancing. I will say that. There, there has to be. There's got to be, the, you know, and the rap battle. There has to be some sort of like rap battle. This is like the original house party was like eight mile before eight mile. You yes. know, they had their little bam right there in the, you I know. I love it. I love it. It's just so authentic because they're musicians and they're just like, yeah, we're actors, but we're still this. And they just were having, you can just tell they're having fun on awesome. set. And I hope that comes through because I love my castmates and I hope it comes through that we were having fun as well. It was definitely a stressful shoot. I will say that for certain reasons, but we had a great time. And I, I think the two guys, they, um, Jacob and Tosin, they definitely got super, super close. And it was like, I almost felt jealous. I was like, dang, like, <laughs> might be a part of the group too. Like it's me too. <laughs> But no, they got so super close and they're like brothers now. And I really hope that can uh, kind of make its way onto the camera and to the theaters. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. How did you come, how did you like get involved with this project? Was it an easy thing? It, you know, just came out of nowhere? Low key, because um, I auditioned more than a year ago. Um, at this point, maybe like a year and a half ago <laughs> um, before the <laughs> pandemic. Okay. And, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the pandemic happened and I wasn't thinking about it as an actor. You kind of have to like let things go. I had a callback for it and I was like, all right, cool. No, they don't want me. Cool. Um, and so like I just got done shooting my show Games People Play and that was in Atlanta. And as I was packing up to come back to Austin, um, my agents called me and they said, you're on your pinned for house party. I was like, house party I mean don't talk about the audition I had like a year ago they're like yeah I was like okay and then um Chuck the director Calmatic Chuck both um he DM'd me I was just like oh my god and he was just like I really want you for the role and yeah I just see you as being Venus Chuck is a very he's a guy who's very adamant and he knows exactly what he wants I've learned and so he DM'd me and 
the the, the next day he's just like, I'm gonna call you before, cause I had a chemistry read with um, with the lead actor. And he was like, I'm, like, I'm gonna DM you. I'm sorry, I'm gonna call you beforehand and give you some pointers. And he did. And um, he just really, really, really believed in me. And I will just, I, I always tell him like, I'm just so thankful for you because being a dark skinned woman in this industry is definitely not the easiest thing. Um, and for someone to fight for you is extremely important because like it's, you can't even, it's hard to even think of maybe like five women my age that are big stars that are, that look like me. So it's like almost hard for me to even fathom being that, but people like him help me realize that I can be, you know, a, a big actor. I can be the love interest. I can be all these things that the industry may tell me I can't be. So it just gave me a lot of confidence and I'm just super, 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 super grateful for him. And um, I just feel like people should give more opportunities to women that look like me. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Well said. Wow. Amazing. You definitely deserve it. Everything I saw you in, I, I watched you even Doom, Doom Patrol, some other stuff. You're amazing. You absolutely deserve uh, the opportunity and uh, I, thankful to this director for sure for throwing you in here and whoever else is involved for getting you involved for sure. Right. Right. You you definitely have it. I, I, not that I'm an expert in those things, but like just as fans, you watch things, you know, you mm -hmm. see things, you know, when something really hits as an actor, but you're like, I love this. You don't know why, but you just know you love. That's that's what the feeling w when I watched you, right? When I saw, man, this girl, she, I mean, for sure, there's no question you're in the moment. You forget you're an actress, if that makes sense. Like to yeah. me, those are the best yeah. actors. You're just seeing the character. Right, right. Oh, I love I, that. I, I don't even see a real person. Like I see the character, you yeah. know, for real. Yeah, and I, so. I love those feelings, especially as an actor, because it's like you you like to nitpick things sometimes without even trying. You're like, mm, that's a weird choice you made. <laughs> but, like, you know, when someone gets you out of that and gets you out of your head and lets you kind of be in the story, it's very, it's like, oh my God, this is great. Like, I was just watching Harder They Fall. I don't know if you've seen it. It just came out on Netflix. It's the Western um, with Idris Elba. No, I want to see that. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. Like, okay. I saw the trailer. I was like, what? You, I mean, a lot of people <laughs> like Westerns and I get it because it can be slow. Um, but when you mix that cast with the writing, with the soundtrack, I was like half asleep when I started and I was awake by the time it was done. Like it was, that's, you know, wow. It was, it was incredible. And the like those actors were, um, I think it's Danielle. Who is Regina uh, King? Is that her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's definitely, she's, I mean, it's Regina. She's absolutely. I love her. And she, man, okay. Right. Yeah, I love her. To like, I don't want to like be a fan girl because, you know, who was watching? <laughs> but hey, Jonathan, um, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love it. I love uh, my ex like hated that I loved him so much. <laughs> um, hey, why? I don't know. The majors, like you don't, you get it right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the actors really let me just kind of relax and enjoy the show. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That I love that you're a fan too. Of, I love that. That's so cool. Of course, I have to be. If yeah. not. I I don't think I'm in the right industry. <laughs> you hear of actors that don't want to watch themselves on things. So I wonder if they watch other people. Yeah. Like, do I'll they even watch movies and stuff? You know, I don't, I don't know. I think the whole, like, oh, I can't watch myself. Oh, I suck. It's yeah. supposed to be like a humble thing, but I'm like, I don't think it's humble. I don't think it's noble. I think you should watch yourself to study. I, I don't watch myself out of like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I watch it because I I want to learn. I want to see how I am on camera and what I can do better. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, it's so easy to talk down on yourself and to say this, this, and this, and it's very easy for me. So I try to like turn it on its head and be like, okay, that may not have been your best, but this is how we can make it better. Constructive criticism is better than just talking down at yourself. So it's an ongoing process, but I think, 
anyone, not even actors, everyone can practice that. Just being nice to yourself. So, you know. Yeah, well said. My gosh, you, you know, you got this down. Yeah. Um, are there any other projects that you want to like shout out or, you know, mention to the audience? I don't want to, you know, overlook anything. I know you're involved with so many different things. So, uh, well, I mean, right now our my show Games People plays out on BT. Um, where it's, we're in episode four right now, coming into episode four on Tuesdays, Tuesdays, nine, 10, nine central. I'd never understand what this 10, nine thing. <laughs> I know it comes on the nine in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> but that what you must. Um, so what are your local listings yeah. Um, but yeah it's on BET on Tuesdays um and Doom Patrol's out I was only in a like two episodes this season but you should watch it anyway because it's incredible and it's a very quirky wacky show um absolutely yeah it, it's so quaggy it really is i love it i had never seen it before i watched it to you know to see you on it and i was like i love uh i loved it i yeah. really did i was not expecting i was right. not expecting that oh no me either when i was studying for the role like yeah i, I remember i was in like a cabin like with no one around but like you know just two friends or something and i'm like this this is weird. <laughs> it's strange. I love it. Um, I was just watch two episodes, but I ended up watching half of the season, which is a long season for the first season. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's so it's definitely weird. It's not for the lighthearted. Um, but yeah, that and you know, I have writing projects coming up. Um, can't say too much about that yet because I gotta finish it first. Um, but yeah, yes. those are the main things happening. I'm like, did I forget anything? <laughs> Is there a release, uh, like a trailer coming out for House Party or something? Or when are we going to know? I don't know about that. That's what we all want to see. Right, right, right. I get that. Um, last time I checked, it was summertime for next year. Um, but no trailer, trailer or teaser. But if you, you know, keep up with me, Instagram, you know, I'll post it. Um, Karen Oblum is my Instagram, you know, a little plug. Uh, or Twitter, <laughs> the same handle. Um, but yeah, definitely be updating everything on my life through the air. Um, awesome. Yeah. I cannot wait to see this uh, trailer for real. Um, oh my gosh. I know. I'm excited. I got, really? I, just the, like the look, the aesthetic, like what, what is this going to be right, about? You know, cool. like, yeah, yeah, totally. I, <laughs> I love it. So yeah. Cool. No, my um, the director, he sent me like some screenshots. He's very secretive. He won't let me see anything. Um, but they finished. I can the, respect that. I can respect that. Very secretive. Um, the first two drafts they finished, and uh, I'm very, very excited. But yeah, I'm excited for. Hell yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, listen, uh, Karen, I'm I'm super excited for you. You know, well deserved. This is amazing. Um, you know, can't wait for this to come out. Uh, yeah, and and you know they're gonna do more house part. You know this is gonna go well. You know they're gonna come on. You can't, you can't not go watch House Party. Like, Absolutely. like people, you know, you can't, you can't. Um, what's it called? Uh, what is the word when someone like purposely doesn't see something? Like, I'm going to rally against this. Oh, certain- I don't know. Uh, protest against it? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, They're maybe. protesting against the reboots. I'm like, I know yeah. you protest. I know you're gonna go see it. Yeah. House <laughs> Party, and you were curious. Hey, there's those the, those hate watchers. They watch something, they hate it, but they watch it anyway. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and then they'll go on Twitter. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not even on Twitter, so I don't even mess with that stuff. Oh my god, Twitter's so fun. You should get okay. it. <laughs> you're the first person that's ever said that. I love that. I love that answer. Actually, yeah, most people are like, you're not missing anything. No. So you're like, you're like, you should get on there. It's I hilarious. A, I have you're a like, on Twitter. Are you kidding me? Who are those people? They're not following the right people. Like this is there's Twitter. This is black Twitter. You got to get <laughs> black Twitter. Okay. There's a whole different ballgame. I'm sure like other Twitters talk about stocks and stuff. No, like get on black Twitter. <laughs> stocks. Oh, uh, Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. I'm following the NASDAQ account. That's my problem. Oh God. That's the problem. That's that the problem. Sounds yeah. Like something I'm not interested in. <laughs> oh, you're cracking me up. I love it. That's hilarious. Well, Karen, again, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so excited you're in Texas. Oh, real quick. You're, you're in Austin there. Just shout out some, you know, 
for the locals here. We love supporting local food and uh, Texas places, especially, of course. Any, like, your favorite places to go eat? Any, you got any in mind? Um, like to go, I don't know, anything. Go eat? I mean, there's always Chewy's. <laughs> Um, there is Torchies, there is, um, a uh, hop daddies, like there I'm in Round Rock right now, which is like North of Austin. And if you haven't had a Round Rock donut, I don't know what you're actually doing. <laughs> they are the best donut you will ever, ever experience. Um, so I you might be right. You might be right. Yes, it's sort of, right. like very unique. I've still never seen it. I don't even know how they make them. I'm still yeah. um, but they're so good. Um, and there, there's this restaurant I just went to, the Grove or something, but it had an incredible view. Um, and it was in like it's like East Austin, but um, it's I mean, there's not many places with the group. Now I now I gotta go see what it was. <laughs> no, that, no. I think you might be right. The Grove. Did you say the Grove? Yeah, but I'm like, there's a Grove in LA and I'm hoping I'm not confusing that. No, there's, I feel like there's a Grove in every city, to be honest with you. That's a typical restaurant name. No, it is. It just, it happens. You yeah. Know, it, it, you know, look up nice view restaurants in <laughs> West Austin. You'll find it, I'm sure. I know you will. <laughs> believe in you i believe in you i believe in your google uh, search abilities yes i did too now they'll find it uh, no the the round rock that that was a great shout they're all great shout outs i i like any any texas place getting shouted out so no we appreciate it uh, yeah, yeah. oh there's there's so many though you'll you won't go wrong with texas you won't go wrong at all you can go to buck buck bucky's the Bucky's, rest yeah and have a brisket sandwich and be happy for the rest of the week. <laughs> so, like you can't go wrong. I love it. For, that's the first Bucky shout out we had. I don't know. How, I don't know how we haven't had more. To be honest, right. everybody loves Bucky's in Texas. Exactly. Why are they acting like they don't? Oh please! Everybody loves Bucky's. I think there's only like three of them. So when you see one, it's like this. You know, glowing. Th you're like, oh my god! I made exactly. it. I found it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, listen, I love ending on Bucky's. That's like the perfect. Uh... Might go there now, get a brisket sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Everybody join Karen. Uh, well, listen, uh, Karen, again, thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're busy. You got a lot of stuff to do. So, you know, we appreciate you taking the time out. And uh, yeah, we'll let you, we'll, we'll send out the stuff to, you know, your rep and everybody when the episode goes out. But again, thank you so much for your time. Really thank appreciate so much, it. God. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show, the end credits. This is everyone responsible for making the show happen. Executive producer, Sebastian Sauerborn. Podcast manager, Nevena Ponovich. Marketing manager, Caroline Grape. Video and audio editors, Danilo Vojnov and Pavel Sebastianovich. Thumbnail designer, Marco Vukovic. Social media manager, Ursa Rusman. Guest outreach, Corey Menciez, Designing Image Quotes, Jay Apuya, Social Media Videos, Labri Fernandez, Outreach Support, Yonet Del Mundo. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. The Lone Star Play Podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more. We're using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. <laughs>